Hey, Kaiser Phoenix here. This is the third part in my blind walkthrough through the Pokemon Black and White games. And it's been a little bit since I filmed the first two parts of this series. You see, I sort of misplaced my camera cord, which not only allows me to charge my camera, and actually, but it actually lets me put the information online. So I had to get that back across state lines. And anyway, here we are. I played a lot of the game. I think I'm actually up to my sixth badge. I just got, did I get a sixth? I think I'm trying for my seventh recently, but I'm still going to talk about the, my experience of the game basically in gym segments. So for the third segment of the game, in which you're fighting the bug gym, and I know it's a bug gym because it's in the freaking manual, the insect badge, basically it's one giant tour through Pinwheel Forest and up into the major city, the one that has the five ports on the map, which is actually kind of looks like a hand now that I look at it. Castelia City. I, I wanted to call it Centralia for, for some reason. Pinwheel Forest was would have been a little more difficult for me if I wasn't training some flying Pokemon. Now I had two flying Pokemon that I was going to train for the third gym, that being P-Dove and Woobat. Now pretty much all the Pokemon in the forest were bug, grass, and I think there was a fighting Pokemon in there fairly frequently, so I had an easy time. I'm sure if you had the Fire Pig, you'd have an easy time too. I've heard that it's a little harder if you have the other version of the game because of Cottony, which actually, which I actually have. I actually traded a, a Petalil for a Cottony. I think Cottony is able to use status inflicting moves in priority, basically that's its ability. So yeah, that would be really annoying if you got paralyzed all the freaking time and couldn't do anything about it. So. Pinwheel Forest was interesting. I fought a bunch of uh, Team Plasma grunts, and basically it was just a great way for me to level up my p dove into a Tranquil. Now Tranquil, I realized, had a pretty cool ability. It had the Lucky ability, which I'm forgetting the name of right now, but basically it gives it a better chance for critical hits, but it also has that move air cutter I believe which also has a high chance for a critical hit anyway so I was just knocking down critical hits like they were nobody's business on Pokemon that they were weak to like uh, like the certain bug grass Pokemon which bug grass yeah that's not a that's not a type that seems to have too many good defensive capabilities Swaddle, Swaddle and Swaddaloon they're not going to take a flying move. They're just not. They may, they may protect themselves for a couple turns, but as soon as they get hit with that air cutter, dead. A lot of the new Pokemon I got this time were pretty much Pokemon that were in the forest. I got Swaddle, I got, or I think, I don't think I caught a Swadloon. I think it evolved soon afterwards. I caught the Venipede, which, typical bug poison type, but still interesting with poison point. I got a Cottony and I don't think I used it at all, but I was like, oh, Cottony. I mean, a lot of these are grass Pokemon. I've got, a, <laughs> I've got the grass starter, so why would I want many of these things? I caught a Petalil. I haven't really touched that either. And that was pretty much it for that series. Like I said, my P-Dub evolved into a Tranquil, which was great for the, for the gym battle. At first, I had to cross that giant bridge, which was cool. It was a cool use of the DS's uh, graphical capabilities, and... One of the more impressive things I've seen for a Pokemon game, but it was also kind of random because it's like there's nothing here really. I don't think I remember actually fighting someone on the bridge. I just sort of ran across and was like, well, that was cool. Too bad there's nothing to do there. I've heard it's sort of a love letter to a certain bridge in Japan. So I guess that makes sense, but it looks cool which the Pokemon series needed some cool sights. As soon as I got into the city, that was pretty impressive too. I had, I had seen the some of the video of, of the circular city and it definitely feels like a city. I, I do appreciate it when game worlds do feel believable. I like the fact there was a ton of people running down the street that didn't really have time for you to say anything. They were just there. They're just there to be... <laughs> they're just there to be a real life city. I like the different roads you can go down. I, saw, I liked all the piers and in fact uh, one of the first things I found out when I went to the city was some guy gave me an evolutionary stone. He's like, hey, you have that Panpour, the water monkey, right? I'm like, um, 
Yes, I do. Well, hey, here's this water stone. That's how it evolves. I was like, oh, I, I guess they evolve with the water stone. I, I was glad to see the water, fire, and grass stones actually used for new Pokemon, which were cool. And it was useful. It was useful for the person to actually tell me that they evolve into that. I so far I haven't really felt like the game has been hiding anything from me. Really, I haven't really felt like it hasn't given me clues on certain things, which is cool. I had no intention of, <laughs> of evolving my Panpour. I was just gonna, uh, I I think as soon as I got the the time pole, I or the time pole, I really didn't. I really didn't use the pan for all that well, but what else about the big city? The funniest thing I saw in the big city was walking down the little alleyway and going like, what are those two dudes doing over there? Are they making out? Are they doing a drug deal? I mean, you got a couple couple guys in the back alleyway. What are, what are they doing? I don't know. How about drug deal myself? I got the dancers to hang out together, and actually explored the city pretty thoroughly before I even thought about challenging the the gym leader but I found this building that was just empty didn't make sense to me at the time but as soon as I tried to challenge the gym they're like oh we need to find team plasma and they're like oh I bet I know and of course they're in the empty building fight them I don't really remember too much about that it wasn't too big a deal but went to the bug gym which I thought was interesting with the honeycomb features and so I think I saw I saw a couple of the involved bugs for the first for the first time. It didn't really surprise me. If I didn't see Swadloon in the forest, I definitely saw it there. But I also saw Whirlipede, which looked pretty cool. I don't I don't uh, I didn't have one at that point, and I still don't today. So I don't necessarily know all that much about it. But oh, that's I think I saw the little hermit crab thing there for the first time. That was a little surprising, but I think I switched. I think I switched into my girder, which I must have at that point been decent enough. I think girder took it out pretty quickly. I don't remember fighting the hermit crab all that much, but as soon as it he's put out this last book one, Levani, which I I mean it's pretty obviously the fully evolved form of a sea waddle and swaddle. I was like, I want that. That looks cool. That looks pretty cool. I don't know any. I really don't know much about it, but that looked pretty cool. The only thing I know is that it's bone grass, and that's not going to do very well against my Tranquil with with Air Cutter. It didn't stand a chance. Third gym, really easy. Had no problems whatsoever. So that was pretty much it for the third gym. I thought it was very cool seeing such a urban city in the Pokemon games, and yeah, still pretty fun. I'll catch you next time with my fourth gym update.